Welcome. This is the one year Bible reading for March 23rd, and we begin today with the last chapter in the book of Numbers, chapter 36. Then the heads of the clans of Gilead, descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph, came to Moses and the family leaders of Israel with a petition. They said, Sir, the Lord instructed you to divide the land by sacred lot among the people of Israel. You were told by the Lord to give the grant of land owned by our brother Zelophadad to his daughters. But if they marry men from another tribe, their grants of land will go with them to the tribe into which they marry. In this way, the total area of our tribal land will be reduced. Then when the year of Jubilee comes, their portion of land will be added to that of the new tribe, causing it to be lost forever to our ancestral tribe. So Moses gave the Israelites this command from the Lord. The claim of the men of the tribe of Joseph is legitimate. This is what the Lord commands considering, concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. Let them marry anyone they like, as long as it was, is within their own ancestral tribe. None of the territorial land may pass from tribe to tribe, for all the land given to each tribe must remain within the tribe to which it was first allotted. The daughters throughout the tribes of Israel who are in line to inherit property must marry within their tribe, so that all the Israelites will keep their ancestral property. No grant of land may pass from one tribe to another. Each tribe of Israel must keep its allotted portion of land. The daughters of Zelophehad did as the Lord commanded Moses. Mala, Tirza, Hogla, Milka, and Noah all married cousins on their father's side. They married into the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Thus, their inheritance of land remained within their ancestral tribe. These are the commands and regulations that the Lord gave to the people of Israel through Moses while they were camped on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho. And now we begin the book of Deuteronomy. So let me give you just a little background in that. So 40 years of desert wandering come to an end in this book. The events of Deuteronomy cover only a week or two of the 11th month of the 40th year. The 12th and last month, month was spent in mourning for Moses. Then the Israelites entered the promised land on the first month of the 41st year after the Exodus. So this is really Moses' discourse, and it consists of a series of farewell messages. It's addressed to the new gen generation destined to possess this land of promise. And like Leviticus, it contains a vast amount of legal detail, but its emphasis is on the layman rather than the priests and sacrifices. Moses reminds the new generation of the importance of obedience if they are to learn from the sad example of their predecessors. Moving from the past, Israel's history, to the present, Israel's holiness and homeland, to the future, Israel's new leader, Moses stresses the faithfulness of Israel's God who brought us out to give us the land. And he starts this account of the history, not in Egypt, but on uh, at Mount Sinai, where he considers the foundation of the nation of Israel to have taken place. These are the words that Moses spoke to all the people of Israel while they were in the wilderness east of the Jordan River. They were camped in the Jordan Valley near Suf, between Paran on one side and Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Zai, uh, Dai Zahab on the other. Normally it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea by way of Mount Seir, but 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses addressed the people of Israel, telling them everything the Lord had commanded him to say. This took place after he had defeated King Sihon of the Am uh, Amorites, who had ruled in Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan, who had ruled in Ashtaroth and Edrai. While the Israelites were in the land of Moab, east of the Jordan River, Moses carefully explained the Lord's instructions as follows. When we are at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plains. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
to and to all of their descendants. Moses continued, At that time I told you, you are too great a burden for me to carry all by myself. The Lord your God has increased your population, making you as numerous as the stars. And may the Lord, the God of our ancestors, multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he promised. But you are such a heavy load to carry. How can I deal with all your problems and bickering? Choose some well-respected men from each tribe who are known for their wisdom and understanding, and I will appoint them as your leaders. Then you responded, Your plan is a good one. So I took the wise and respected men you had selected from your tribes and appointed them to serve as judges and officials over you. Some were responsible for a thousand people, some for a hundred, some for fifty, and some for ten. At that time I instructed the judges, You must hear the cases of your fellow Israelites and the foreigners living among you. Be perfectly fair in your decisions and impartial in your judgments. Hear the cases of those who are poor as well as those who are rich. Don't be afraid of anyone's anger, for the decision you make is God's decision. Bring me any cases that are too difficult for you, and I will handle them. At that time I gave you instructions about everything you were to do. Then, just as the Lord our God commanded us, we left Mount Sinai and traveled through the great and terrifying wilderness, as you yourselves remembered, remember, and headed toward the hill country of the Amorites. When we arrived in Kadesh Barnea, I said to you, You have now reached the hill country of the Amorites that the Lord our God is giving us. Look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. But you all came to me and said, First, let's send out scouts to explore the land for us. They will advise us on the best route to take and which towns we should enter. This seemed like a good idea to me, so I chose twelve scouts, one from each of your tribes. They headed for the hill country and came to the valley of Eshkol and explored it. They picked some of its fruit and brought it back to us, and they reported, The land the Lord our God has given us is indeed a good land. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God and refused to go in. You complained in your tents and said, The Lord must hate us. That's why he has brought us here from Egypt, to hand us over to the Amorites to be slaughtered. Where can we go? Our brothers have demoralized us with their report. They tell us the people of the land are taller and more powerful than we are, and their towns are large, with walls rising high into the sky. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. But I said to you, don't be shocked or afraid of them. The Lord your God is going ahead of you. He will fight for you, just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way, as you traveled through the wilderness, just as a father cares for his child. Now he has brought you to this place. But even after all he did, you refused to trust the Lord your God, who goes before you looking for the best places to camp, guiding you with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. When the Lord heard your complaining, he became very angry, so he solemnly swore, Not one of you from this wicked generation will live to see the good land I swore to give your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He will see this land, because he has followed the Lord completely. I will give to him and his descendants some of the very land he explored during his scouting mission. And the Lord was also angry with me because of you. He said to me, Moses, not even you will enter the promised land. Instead, your assistant Joshua, son of Nun, will lead the people into the land. Encourage him, for he will lead Israel as they take possession of it. I will give the land of your little ones, your innocent children, to your little ones, your innocent children. You were afraid they would be captured, but they will be the ones who occupy it. As for you, turn around now and go back through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Then you confessed, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go into the land and fight for it, as the Lord our God has commanded us. So your men strapped on their weapons, thinking it would be easy to attack the hill country. But the Lord told me to tell you, Do not attack, for I am not with you. If you go ahead on your own, you will be crushed by your enemies. This is what I told you, but you would not listen. Instead, you again rebelled against the Lord's command and arrogantly went into the hill country to fight. But the Amorites who lived there came out against you like a swarm of bees. They chased and battered you all the way from Seir to Horma. 
Then you returned and wept before the Lord, but he refused to listen. So you stayed there at Kadesh for a long time. Luke, beginning in chapter 5, verse 29. Later, Levi, who you remember is the tax collector that Jesus just called, held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them, but the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Jesus answered them, Healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. One day some people said to Jesus, John the Baptist's disciples fast and pray regularly, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. Why are your disciples always eating and drinking? Jesus responded, Do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But some day the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Then Jesus gave them this illustration. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment would be ruined, and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would, be, would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wineskins, but no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine, they say. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples broke off heads of grain, rubbed off the husks in their hands, and ate the grain. But some Pharisees said, Why are you breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus replied, haven't you read in the scriptures when di what David did when he and his companions were hungry? They went into the house of God and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests can eat. He also gave some to his com companions. And Jesus added, the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. And I liked this um, from my commentary today. So... Uh, once when fleeing from Saul, David and his men ate this consecrated bread. Their need was more important than ceremonial regulations. Jesus was appealing to the same principle, which he often did. Human need was more important than human regulations and rules. By comparing, comparing himself and his companions with David and his companions, Jesus was saying, if you condemn me, you must also condemn King David. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while t Jesus was teaching. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched Jesus closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with a deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day for doing evil? Is it a day to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them one by one and said to the man, Hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand, and it was restored. At this, the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with him. Psalm 66 Shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Tell the world how glorious he is. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Your enemies cringe before your mighty power. Everything on earth will worship you. They will sing your praises, shouting your name in glorious songs. Come and see what our God has done. What awesome miracles he performs for people. He made a dry path through the Red Sea, and his people went across on foot. There we rejoiced in him, for by his great power he rules forever. He watches every movement of the nations. Let no rebel rise in defiance. Let the whole world bless our God and loudly sing his praises. Our lives are in his hands, and he keeps our feet from stumbling. You have tested us, O God. You have purified us like silver. You have captured us in your net and laid the burden of slavery on our backs. Then you put a leader over us. We went through fire and flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. 
Now I come to your temple with burnt offerings to fulfill the vows I made to you. Yes, the sacred vows that I made when I was in deep trouble. That is why I am sacrificing burnt offerings to you, the best of my rams as a pleasing aroma, and a sacrifice of bulls and male goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his unfailing love from me. Proverbs eleven twenty four and tw- through 26 Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. People curse those who hoard their grain, but they bless the one who sells in time of need. And to end, I have a blessing for you today. And it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. And it reminds me of Deuteronomy that we read this morning, which said, the Lord is going ahead of you. Um, And... And then a few verses later, the Lord goes before you looking for the best places. This says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. May you rise up today with the full assurance that God has your back. He is with you, for you, and actively working on your behalf. He does for you what you cannot do for yourself. May you do for him the one thing you can do. Trust him with your whole heart and embrace joy along the way. Grace and peace to you this day. I love you all.